Hello everyone, my name is Mehek Dua and I am an assistant professor of journalism teaching at Delhi University. The topic of our discussion today is transmedia storytelling. The objective of this lesson is to understand the concept of transmedia storytelling and highlight how our audience participation plays an important role therein. Storytelling has been practiced by humans since time immemorial. It can be described as a socio-cultural activity which we undertake to make communication better and interesting. Stories have been told since ancient prehistoric times around campfires and have eventually moved to various new platforms. The medium of storytelling has always been evolving. What began as an intimate experience of people gathering around campfires to share stories moved on to an age where the practice became more individualistic as people began consuming stories through books and eventually television. Whether the stories are told through a storyteller, books or mass media, there remains a sense of authority to it. The narrative is often pre-decided by the author or storyteller and the role of the audience in such a scenario is usually restricted to that of a listener or a reader rather than an active participant. This makes the communication mostly one way and leaves little space for interaction. However, over the years, with introduction of digital technologies, there has been a shift in the storytelling process as well. Storytelling narratives have changed tremendously, allowing for greater interaction, participation and emergence of subjective point of views as well. Since the late 1990s, digital technologies of production, distribution and consumption have provided the means for stories which can be created quickly and shared widely. They have given unprecedented power to a layman by providing entry points in the story world. Thereby, digital technologies have led to the decentralization in the storytelling process by lending non-experts or amateurs the opportunity to tell stories or contribute to the existing ones or share their viewpoints using digital technology. The audience is no more a mere spectator or a listener but an active participant. A large part of this participation can be attributed to transmedia storytelling, a form of storytelling which has become increasingly popular in the past few years. Transmedia storytelling is a form of telling stories across multiple platforms. Stories in popular culture such as the Star Wars, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter and many more are examples of this form of storytelling which incorporates a wide range of media from novels and books to television series, films, video games and social media. The term transmedia storytelling has been introduced by Henry Jenkins. Jenkins has identified patterns in storytellings wherein users on the web make use of web 2.0 tools to engage with a popular narrative and also create different versions of it. He refers to it as a process where integral elements of a fiction get dispersed systematically across multiple delivery channels for the purpose of creating a unified and coordinated entertainment experience. Ideally, each medium makes its own unique contribution to the unfolding of the story. Jenkins attributes the rise of transmedia storytelling to convergence and participatory culture greatly enabled by the new media technologies. However, he also states that convergence is not limited just to combining different technologies into one, it rather refers to a process that changes how media is both consumed and produced. Convergence can be technological, economic, cultural and global. Similarly, Jenkins defines participatory culture as a new style of consumerism that emerges in the new media environment wherein new media technologies enable average citizens to participate in the archiving, annotation, appropriation, transformation and recirculation of media content. Digital technologies has enabled manipulation of content from photoshopping pictures to fiddling with audio. A space for grassroots cultural production enabled by the web has made people excited about self-expression and creativity. They use such features of the web to interact and to engage with various types of media content as also with popular culture. 
Now let's talk about transmedia storytelling and economics of media consolidation. The concept of transmedia storytelling also points to the economics of media consolidation. While acknowledging expansive media narratives and creating immersive experiences for the audience, the producer or authors themselves try to create experiences for their potential audiences on various different platforms. For instance, the Star Wars universe and the Marvel universe are based on the very idea of telling stories across multiple platforms while engaging the audiences uniquely on all the given platforms. Here, the story might be introduced through a film and expanded through novels, comics, television shows, animated series on television or on the web, online games or even as an experience created through an amusement park based on the concept of the story world. Similarly, each character in the story has their own unique background which is often highlighted in different ways using different media. For example, films like Iron Man, Iron Man 2, Iron Man 3, The Incredible Hulk, Captain America, The First Avenger, Thor and many such films, Netflix shows along with Marvel's tie-in comic books and one-shots are all examples of Marvel Cinematic Universe which point to the use of transmedia storytelling as being an integral element to it. A very important aspect at the heart of transmedia storytelling is the audiences and to create enriching experiences for them is what makes makers aim for. Displaying different aspects of the story on different platforms tends to create a unified and wholesome experience for the audience who act as participants navigating their way across different mediums and interacting with the content in their own unique manner. The phenomenon of transmedia storytelling is not entirely new and it is rooted in much older practices like the art of writing fan fiction even before the digital technologies were available. The concept of telling stories across multiple platforms had interested the industry even in the pre-digital era. But the digital technologies only tend to accentuate that because of their underlying characteristics. They allow for the creation of a participatory environment and empower the viewers by making them seek different bits of content on different platforms. These new practices of storytelling are also strongly linked with the convergence culture following the media entertainment industry's commercial interest in promoting their entertainment franchises. Transmedia storytelling fits into the broader context of increasing possibilities of user-generated content and fan production along with an industry-regulated convergence culture. In such an environment, media content flow across multiple platforms as a result of the cooperation between media industries and media audiences. Jenkins notes this is a cultural shift from a passive media consumption to a more active participatory culture wherein fans and consumers are encouraged to make sense of the information in their own unique manner and seek out content actively, make their own connection among dispersed content while also contributing to the creation and circulation of new content and stories. Transmedia storytelling thus reflects the economics of consolidation of media industries wherein certain media corporations are horizontally integrated and hold interest in a range of distinct media industries. By spreading their brand or product across as many different platforms as possible, a media conglomerate can earn better incentives. Consider the example of the Harry Potter franchise and how it has been able to hold the audience's interest even decades after the first book was released. The story spans across platforms like books, movies, online games, fandoms, amusement parks, and much more, all of which enhance the audience's experience and reward them with increased possibilities of being entertained. Thus, the story becomes more expansive and immersive compared to what they could be otherwise. A story told through multiple platforms encourages the audiences to contribute to it in unprecedented ways. Viewers and fans can get together to discuss the characters, plots, and also how a story is likely to unfold further. Jenkins uses the term hunters and gatherers for viewers who, have, who move across the various narratives weaving a coherent thread from all the dispersed information that they see. Jenkins focuses on the performative role that the audiences play in making sense of the information. He says that transmedia texts do not simply lay information across various platforms but rather offer various categories of roles that an individual can assume when they interact with the text. 
For instance, the Harry Potter transmedia franchise encourages the audience through various means to identify themselves as belonging to the visiting world. There are sites that sort fans into Hogwarts houses, help them choose a wand based on their characteristics, play video games in the simulated worlds of Harry Potter where they can assume a role of a character from the book, form fandoms and much more. It extends even to the offline world as fans can purchase Harry Potter merchandise and also visit theme parks based on the original story. Now let's discuss some of the principles of transmedia storytelling. Jenkins has also laid down some principles of transmedia storytelling in his blog and cautions the readers that these principles apply mostly to the storytelling aspect of transmedia while they might have some overlaps with transmedia branding transmedia learning and transmedia performance as well. The principles offer an insight into how a story can be identified as relying on the transmedia model. While in his blog, he has highlighted how these principles of transmedia storytelling apply to the education system, they can also be applied more broadly to fictional story worlds and the role of fans therein. The first principle is Spreadability versus Drillability. This is basically referring to the process of dispersal. Here, spreadability refers to the audience's scanning across the media landscape to look for meaningful bits of content, while drillability refers to digging deeper into something that catches the audience's eye. It describes the possibility to explore the story world in greater detail. The second principle is continuity versus multiplicity. Here, Jenkins says that the media industry often talks of continuity in terms of canons, that is information which has already been authorized and accepted as an acceptable version of a story. In contrast to that is the notion of multiplicity, wherein the audiences are encouraged to make multiple meanings of information and thereby create multiple versions of a story. Under this aspect, the story can exist and also be retold in an alternate universe. Then comes the principle of immersion versus extraction. Both these points stand at the opposite ends of the spectrum. While immersion is about sinking deep into the story world, Extraction is about extracting elements from the story world and applying them in the real world. As an example, we can consider how fans choose to display their affection towards their favorite story world by donning something which belongs to a specific story, carrying wands and wearing Gryffindor houses, muffler are examples of how fans extract elements from the story world of Harry Potter and use them in their day-to-day -day lives. Stemming from this point is the next principle which is world building. Jenkins suggests here that we need to think of world building in terms of the fictional geography that the story world creates. He goes on to say that books with a strong focus on maps tend to project a fictional world which the readers need to engage with in order to develop their understanding of it. World building is not restricted just to fictional geography and extends to cultural geography as well, which includes our sense of people, their norms and rituals, their dress and speech, their everyday experiences. Jenkins reasons that this is more often than not the pleasure of reading a fantasy or science fiction narrative. Next comes seriality which refers to the unfolding of the story in multiple segments using one medium as well as across multiple media. It can also be understood as the process of cutting longer narratives into smaller parts which are then distributed across several platforms. An element of interest or surprise might remain in the end which would motivate the audiences to keep coming back to the story. It is about breaking down a story into chapters which are interesting on their own, but can enhance the audience's experience if looked at as a whole. Such a storytelling technique can drive both anticipation and speculation, which results in deeper audience engagement. Jenkins then refers to the principle of subjectivity. Subjectivity is about looking at the same event from multiple viewpoints. 
Here, the story becomes a bit more complex as multiple dimensions are added to it. Different characters in a story are given some context as their backstory is built. This can be done through the various media other than the main medium. For example, supplementing a movie through a comic based on one of the characters. To create subjectivity, minor characters often get another platform to have their point put across. This is also often done by fans when they interact with the story and share their perspective on various platforms. Fans may use social media platforms to do so or create online communities around characters, shows, or movies to engage with it. Lastly, Jenkins defines performance as another principle of transmedia storytelling. Performance can be understood as fans' way of interacting with the story. Performance can be discussed in terms of cultural attractors, something that draws the audience's attention to a story and makes them perform some bits of it. The fans are encouraged to act upon the story. They may be inspired to investigate deeper into a story and speculate what may happen further or use bits and parts of it to create fan fiction. It could also mean that fans are encouraged to vote for their favorite contestants on a reality show, make video content around a given story, or perform roles inspired by some shows or movies in a theatrical play. Transmedia storytelling and concerns around participation. It is being noticed increasingly that a transmedia product is not the sole proprietary of a media company but belongs equally to its fans. The shift from passive receivers to active participants aided greatly by social media has contributed to transmedia storytelling becoming a possibility. This hints at a collaborative relationship between professional authors or industry producers and audience members who identify themselves as fans. In her paper on transmedia storytelling, Melanie Schiller, professor of media studies and popular music, suggests that the term for this sort of mutual dependency between author and audiences is collaborative authorship. This collaboration is not restricted just to fans or audiences but also extends to different media industries such as films, gaming and publishing. It also incorporates different professional roles such as screenwriters, comic book writers, animators, etc. As a result, transmedia storytelling can problematize the notion of authorship. It raises concerns over the author's or producer's intellectual property rights and autonomy over the subject. Fans are empowered by the participatory culture in the sense that they do not settle with a set narrative or a definitive version produced, authorized and regulated by some media conglomerate. Instead, fans perceive intellectual property right as shareware, as against being a limited good. The narrative gains more value as it flows, gets retold as it attracts a greater number of audiences and opens itself to multiple interpretations. Examples include work produced under open source, creative commons or copyleft. What this does to the narrative is that it makes it fluid and allows for multiple meaning making at the level of audiences or fan. The dilemma that faces media conglomerates here is how much to let go. They often respond strictly by not wanting audiences to dictate the terms of interaction. They in turn try to determine the level of interaction that fans can enjoy with intellectual property, often preferring to offer activities through computer games or websites over free form participation represented by fan culture. If you look at the advantages that such a scenario offers, then it can be argued that transmedia storytelling can lead to more diverse representation in popular culture. For instance, the hashtag Black Hermione fan fiction on social media inspired the casting of Noma Dumas-Winnie, a British actress and women of color, as Hermione Granger in the original West End and Broadway runs of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. The author J.K. Rowling responded positively to the same, stating on her Twitter page that in her novel, she never mentioned Hermione's skin color. She just specified her character as having brown eyes, frizzy hair and being very clever. To conclude, it becomes important to recapitulate what transmedia storytelling is and why there is a need to differentiate it from cross-media and multimedia. Transmedia storytelling, in a strict sense of the term, is about extending the narrative, 
of a given story by employing multiple delivery channels. In cross-media storytelling, there is one story that gets told through multiple channels. Jenkins also presents a distinction between multimedia and transmedia. He states that multimedia refers to the integration of multiple modes of expression within a single application, whereas transmedia refers to the dispersal of those same elements across multimedia platforms. For instance, some educational information can be presented through a CD-ROM which can combine text, audio, photographs and videos which can be accessed through the same interface. With transmedia, the same information can be spread across various platforms. Students need to actively seek out that content and they get to decide how they would make coherence of the information available to them. In multimedia applications, the content is readily served on the click of the mouse. But in case of transmedia content, it is derived by making certain choices. In that sense, multimedia and transmedia assume very different roles for consumers. Although it is true that transmedia storytelling involves the economics of media consolidation, it should not be confused with the expansion of just the media franchise as through the production of toys, merchandise or video games. Each element present in the transmedia story world should build on the narrative and help take it further. Transmedia stories can be told from different points of views and many of the interpretations available are open-ended. Such stories can unfold in different sequences and across different time frames for different audiences. Lastly, collaboration and participation re-emphasize the socio-cultural function of storytelling. It becomes important for the authors and producers to take note of this and create spaces for audiences, uh, for engagement within the story world and offer diverse representation so as to safeguard their own rights as well. That brings us to the end of this lecture. Thank you for listening. Thank you.